Hey guys, this is Zacharat Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. Today's will be of the rambling variety. I didn't have much time today. I wasn't actually expecting to record a video, but I wanted to talk about a Star Wars book that I am currently reading that a lot of you may not already be familiar with, and that is Shatterpoint. And I've been talking about Shatterpoint a lot over the past few days. My video yesterday about kinetic bombardment stemmed from Shatterpoint, as did my one about the early months of the Clone Wars. And to be honest, that's because for one, it's a very compelling book but for two I also think that it's important that you guys support this book Shatterpoint before we get into the actual details I want to talk about was actually one of the recent releases as part of the Star Wars Legends Essentials collection that meant for the first time it got an unabridged audiobook but it also got a new paperback release Anyway, this video will have some mild spoilers, but I'm mostly going to talk about the tone of the book and some general plot points. That being said, if you're interested, you still may want to read the book before watching this video. Alright, so Shatterpoint is unlike basically any other Star Wars Legends book or Star Wars book generally because of its content and its tone. Now, there have been plenty of dark Star Wars books in the past. The Darth Bane trilogy, of course, is very violent and gory. Others like Darth Maul Lockdown are even gorier, but the thing that Shadowpoint does is that it takes the Star Wars universe and tells basically a real world story in it. Like, Darth Bane is dark and it's gory and bad things happen, but it's always firmly rooted in the Star Wars universe. Shatterpoint, on the other hand, gives us a fairly accurate and disturbing depiction of a colonial or civil war. And of course, this isn't the only war book in Star Wars. You've got the Republic Commando series, you've got TV shows like The Clone Wars, but what Shatterpoint manages to do better than all of those, in my opinion, is really grapple with the dark reality of the subject matter. It's a very, very heavy read, at least for a Star Wars book. And I was talking about this last night on Twitter. Follow me there if you haven't already, but Star Wars books at the end of the day, even when bad things happen, are generally fairly light. That's usually how the universe operates i think the universe works well as a sort of not quite whimsical but like a fantastic space opera of course people will die there will be sad moments but usually the stories even in like the yuzhan vong war overall never reach the real dark points of more traditional fiction or non-fiction literature i think shatterpoint is transcendent in the way it's written shatterpoint by the way was created by famed star wars author matthew Stover, who also wrote lots of other great books, including the Revenge of the Sith novelization. Anyway, anyway, let's talk about what the book is about. And as I said, I'm going to give you guys a basic sort of overview of at least the setup without going into any spoilers past the first, let's say, third or a half. Anyway, the one comparison that everyone makes to Shatterpoint and the comparison that I think is very apt is to Apocalypse Now, the Vietnam War movie. And that's not only because the vast majority of Shatterpoint takes place on Haroon Call, which is a jungle planet, but also because it mirrors the themes of Apocalypse Now and many other war movies and similar movies and books, including the original source material Heart of Darkness. A lot of this book is about the overwhelming brutality which is inescapable for those living on Haroon Call. There has been a conflict known as the Summertime War, which has been going on for some time and is motivated simply by a colonial force clashing with the native population, including the Corin, which is a human people that Mace Windu actually belongs to. So of course we get themes of imperialism as these people who have come to Haroon Call to take its jungle and use the resources within have waged an all-out war against the Corin. They've destroyed their villages, they've killed their people and their herd animals, and it's just been a really long, bloody war that's engulfed much of the planet. So certainly at least the wild jungles where the Corrin usually reside. Anyway, I'll actually give you guys the plot summary in a second. I know I keep pushing this off, but another major theme of this story that we also see in movies like Apocalypse Now or books like Heart of Darkness is just the idea of futility and madness and the fact that there's really and not any more logic to this war anymore. It's just gone on so long because the Karun are used to killing the off-worlders at sight and vice versa. And Mace Windu's in a perspective in this novel as a third party, but on all occasions, basically, at least early on, he's unable 
to reason with either side. He's unable to stop people from killing each other, even in cases where it would benefit both of them not to do so. I'll get to more themes in a second, but I think before I do, it's important that I give a setup to this book. So it starts off with Mace Windu and Yoda at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, and they receive a message which shows a slaughter on the planet of Haroon Kal. Children are killed as they are throughout this book. Civilians are killed. I think they say there's 14 in total who are massacred and stuck within the mouth of one of the dead victims, sort of stapled together with a tree barb, is a message for Mace Windu. The message comes from none other than Depa Balaba, Mace Windu's former Padawan, and she shows all signs of being fully insane. The Jedi initially sent her to Haroon Kal because the planet is important and is a part of the Clone Wars. It's sort of a hyperspace node between a bunch of other systems. She's been working as a part of the local militia, sort of, the Corrin, fighting back against the offworlders and helping to attempt to secure the planet for the Republic. But of course, she falls into the darkness of the jungle and Mace Windu dispatches himself really to Haroon Call to try to figure out what's going on. And from the moment he arrives on the planet, you just are given this overwhelming feeling of there's no escaping what's about to happen and it's completely hopeless like there's one scene where he's walking into the jungle and he thinks like this is my one chance to turn back now or else i'll basically be in this until i see it through and you get that feeling it's sort of the early part of the book has almost a dune like state to it where the people are just trying to survive as they're moving through the jungle which of course is filled with these incredibly dangerous animals and plants mace is being led through the jungle by the corin who say they can take him to depa and the real horror comes in the situations where the Corrin, including Mace, meet with off-worlders. And I say off-worlders, but many of the people on the planet are there full-time. They've been there their entire lives. They're using the jungle for resources, but of course they see the Corrin as savage natives. The Corrin see them as destroying their way of life, and they've basically been killing each other on site for a decade. And there are some real horrific moments in here. As I said, we've got children killed. We've got allusions to rape. We've got children killing others, sort of acting as child soldiers, and it's very realistic as a stand-in for any sort of other colonial or civil war in real life, and that's why I think it's so dark. You feel like what Mace Windu is feeling, most of the book is from his perspective, but you realize that his experiences in this book are basically a mirror of what a lot of people go through in real life, whether as a part of one of these colonial wars or civil wars or just through any sort of historical war. This book is bloody, this book is oppressive, but it's still a really good read. And, you know, there's more to it than just the real world allegories and representations. Of course, we, we are featuring Mace Windu here. He's a badass character. He uses the Force lots through this book, but he never really relies on it, even his unique Shatterpoint feature, at least early on, later on. You know, I don't, don't wanna talk about that. But the whole point is that he's really just a part of this greater war, a war that he thought was just a small conflict within the Clone Wars, but which he discovers is actually a part of something much, much larger. And even as one of the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy, he's basically unable to fight back against these rolling tides that have been hitting each other forever, basically. From a Star Wars perspective too, the book does have some interesting commentary. One of the big things is about the dark side, and Star Wars Legends especially has long had this discussion about what causes someone to fall to the dark side and what is a dark side power. Is it something that is done for the wrong intentions? So if you use a mind trick and use it for the wrong intentions, is it the intention that makes it bad? Or is it the action that makes it bad? Is the fact that you're dominating someone's mind? If you're using force lightning, for example, is it okay if you're using it to defend somebody? Or is that type of technique just bad because of the way it is its fundamental nature? This book has sort of a third option option where a Jedi can be good even when they're doing bad things. The reason why they avoid using certain powers and why they avoid using the Force also for certain reasons, why you don't use the Force willy-nilly is because you weaken your resolve. You can allow yourself to think you're doing something for good, and maybe you are at the beginning, but that can be a slippery slope. I don't want to say too much more on that, but the major conflict within Mace sort of matches the conflict from without. You know, he's fighting against his dark side throughout this entire book. He uses, of course, the pod, which is a lightsaber style which sort of uses his love of battle and his 
natural dark side tendencies, but he's also, for parts of the book, considering how to best slaughter civilians or looking for excuses to murder people before snapping himself out of it. So it's a very interesting story. Again, I'm going to highly recommend you guys read Shatterpoint. I've talked about it being dark and heavy, and that's not a bad thing. I think it's unique and interesting as a Star Wars book. There are other books which are scary or dark or not very pleasant to read, but none like this in my opinion, which really you could remove all the Force things. You could set it in a real world country and you basically have the same novel, at least the same general premise. But guys, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.